What's going on, Boomerites? How we doing today? Get ready. We're doing a movie reaction today. This is going to be my first time watching. Well, I don't know. I Somebody has suggested that I watch The Imitation Game. And I remember watching it for about... When I thought back on it, I watched it for about like 30, 40 minutes, something like that. And I think it was like right in the middle of the movie. So I never watched it beginning to end. So this will be my first time watching it beginning to end. Now I know this film, which stars Benedict Cumberbatch, who I am a big fan of. He is playing Alan Turing, who was a very bright man. And this is about the German Enigma uh, device, which was kind of like their coding device during World War II. And it was very sophisticated. And it was up to a group of scientists, learned men. Alan Turing was among them who uh, cracked the German code. So <clears throat> I knew of this story before I jumped into the 30 minutes I saw before. Um, it's, uh, I think it's quite famous even here in the States. But um, other than that, I don't know the details behind it, like what was done. <clears throat> um, I, I know just the general gist of the story, not the whole backstory. So this should be a v quite informative movie for me. Um, now remember, it is a movie, so it might not get everything right, and maybe I might say something in the reaction where I might not get it right. Feel free to correct me because, uh, you know, I love history, but I'm no means an expert. You guys can always correct me on things I'm wrong about when it comes to history. But this seems like a very interesting movie. I remember when I watched uh, a little bit of it, I found it very interesting. I just didn't never got to finish it or I, I didn't start from the beginning anyway. So this may be my first time watching beginning to end and I know we do a lot of comedy stuff uh, on the channel to react to, but uh, this will be a little different, kind of like when I did 19 the 1917 reaction, which was uh, <clears throat> quite good, even though it made Queen Boomer cry a lot. But I'm sure there's going to be some very moving moments in this film as well. I'm a big ben uh, Benedict Cumberbatch fan. Cumberbatch, God. It's hard to say that last name, but, uh, you know... I'll get it down eventually. Anyway, let's get into the movie reaction. Uh, if you don't like the way it's cut up here on YouTube, the full movie reaction is on Patreon. It's uncut, so you will get all of the all of my reactions to the uh, film on Patreon. So, anyway, folks, let's jump in there. Remember to like, subscribe, and do whatever you guys want. Okay. All right. Let's see what the brave, intelligent. Young folks of the United Kingdom did back then. All right, I'll see you in there. We'll see about that. Manchester, home of the bald bank twat. Twat. I've probably already turned a lot of people off because this is a, quite a serious film. Are you paying attention? If you're not listening carefully, you will miss things. I'll miss them anyway, don't worry about it. I am in control, because I know things that you do not know. Probably knew a lot of things that I will never know. This broken home's been ransacked. You will listen closely and you will not judge me until I am finished. What happens from this moment forwards is not my responsibility. Oh, Mark Strong's in this, nice. Pay attention. Alan Turing has been robbed. What did they take? What's all this then? Turing, Alan. Seems he's been a burglary. Oh, what of? Well, that's just it. Nothing missing, really. What's he doing in Manchester? Something with machines. The project at the MPL. Wow, look at that. Professor Turing, Detective Knock, Manchester Police. Sergeant Starley tells me he had a burglary last night. Take a step back. Don't breathe heavily. Disappointing. Pardon? I like how he's from Manchester. I know this actor. He's actually pretty good. He's been in some of the James Bond films. But I love that he's a policeman from Manchester and he's sporting that Carl Pilkington look. So how about you tell us what happened and we'll find the chap who did this. <laughs> uh, what I could use right now is not a bobby, but a really good cleaning lady. So unless one of you has a, an apron in your car, I suggest you file your reports and 
As you say, Professor Turin. Tell me you don't think this is suspicious. I don't think this is suspicious. A mysterious professor who won't admit he's had something stolen from his house. I think Alan Turing's hiding something. What's he hiding? War declared! 800,000 children evacuated! I can't imagine the levels of fear when um, the UK was uh, standing alone fighting the Nazis for that year and a half or two years where they were basically last man standing in the war. It must have been, it must have been terrifying, but they overcame it. So it's a lot you can learn from uh, that generation of uh, Brits over there. This morning, the British ambassador in Berlin handed the German government a final note. State of war would exist between us. Oh, Charles Dance is in this. Tywin Lannister. <laughs> Almost looks like a Harry Potter scene a little bit. Going to Hogwarts, baby. Papers, please. There he is. What are you doing here? Tywin Lannister. I love Charles Dance. Who are you? Alan Turing, a mathematician. Correct. However, could I have guessed? Well, you didn't. You just read it on that piece of paper. Don't piss off Tywin Lannister. How old are you, Mr. Turing? Uh, 27. And how old were you when you published this paper that has a title I can barely understand? Uh, uh, 23. I can't, you're serious. Would you prefer I made a joke? Oh, I don't think you know what those are. Mr... Commander Denniston, Royal Navy. Why do you wish to work for His Majesty's government? Oh, I don't really. <laughs> but you do realize that 600 miles away from London, there's this nasty little chap called Hitler who wants to engulf Europe in tyranny. Politics isn't really my area of expertise. Well, I believe you've just set the record for the shortest job interview in British military history. Oh. Do you know how many people I've rejected for this program? No. Well, that's right, because we're a top secret program. That only last week I rejected one of our great nation's top linguists. Knows German better than Bertolt Brecht. I don't speak German. What? I don't speak German. Well, how the hell are you supposed to decrypt German communications if you don't cook <laughs> on? I don't know. Speak German. Well, I'm really quite excellent at crossword puzzles. <laughs> and uh, this is the most d a difficult puzzle in the world. Margaret! This is a joke, obviously. I'm afraid I don't know what those are. <laughs> Have a pleasant trip back to Cambridge, Professor. Enigma. You said the magic word. That's what you're doing here, the top secret program at Bletchley, you're trying to break the German Enigma machine. What makes you think that? Greatest encryption device in history, and the Germans use it for all major communications. If the Allies broke Enigma, it turned into a very short war indeed. You also haven't got anywhere with it. If you had, you wouldn't be hiring cryptographers out of university. I, I like solving problems, Commander. And Enigma is the most difficult problem in the world. Everyone thinks Enigma is unbreakable. Let me try, and we'll know for sure, won't we? <clears throat> Welcome to Enigma. Not only is he good, he knows how good he is. Overconfident? History clearly says no. It's beautiful. It's the crooked hand of death itself. Our wrens intercept thousands of radio messages a day. And to the lovely young ladies of the Women's Royal Navy, they're nonsense. But we have an Enigma machine. So what's the problem? Just put the interceptive messages back into the Enigma and you'll but get... It's the not that simple. Having an Enigma machine doesn't help you to decode the messages. Very good, Mr. Turing. Decode a message, you need to know the machine's settings. Now, the Germans switch settings every day promptly at midnight, which gives you exactly 18 hours every day to crack the code before it changes and you start again. Wow. It's over 150 million, million, million possible settings. Damn. 159 with 18 zeros behind it. Oh, there's the other smartest guy in the room. Gentlemen, meet Hugh Alexander. I've heard of him too. Hugh Alexander, I've heard of him. Don't know much about him though. Are we to work together then? I prefer to have my own office. You're a team and you will work as one. Okay. If you can't play together, then I'm afraid we can't let you play at all. This is Stuart Mingus, MI6. There are only five divisions of military intelligence. There is no MI6. Exactly. exactly. Wow. So MI6 was their own people didn't even know it existed at the time. I did not know that. That's amazing. You know, because everybody's heard of the CIA or the when the Soviet Union was around the KGB. But I did not know that the 
MI6 stayed a secret among the vast majority of its own people for quite some time, even all the way up to World War II. That's, uh, that's interesting. Maybe somebody in the comments can let me know more about that. Do you know how many British servicemen have died because of Enigma? Uh, no, I don't. Three. While we've been having this conversation. Oh, look, there's wow. another. I rather hope he didn't have a family. Oof, this guy's blunt. Break the code. At least we have a chance. Shall we leave the children alone with their new toy? Hmm. Let's play. The game was quite a simple one. Every single German message, every surprise attack. They were all floating through the air. Radio signals. The trick was that they were encrypted. Over 159 million, million, million possible Enigma settings. All we had to do was try each one. But if we had 10 men checking one setting a minute, how many days do you think it would take to check each of the settings? It's years. It's 20 million years. To stop a coming attack, we would have to check 20 million years worth of settings. Oh my In God. 20 minutes. In 20 minutes? Fuck me. Oh, no. Good Lord, what is it about women with little hats? Oh, Hugh Alexander is a horny fucker. We're going to get some lunch. I said we're off to get some lunch. <laughs> this is starting to get a little bit repetitive. I had asked if you wanted to come to lunch with us. No, you didn't. You said you were going to get some lunch. Would you like to come to lunch with us? What time's lunchtime? Christ, Alan, it's a bleeding sandwich. Oh, I don't like sandwiches. Never mind. <laughs> He's such an awkward guy. Most geniuses are, though. We have decrypted a number of German messages by analyzing the frequency of letter distribution. I'm designing a machine that will allow us to break every message every day instantly. Who's hungry? Let's go. I'm hungry. <laughs> I didn't realize Alan Turing was going to be funny in this movie. Even if he's not intending to be. That's weird. It, it kind of, from those pictures and designs, it kind of looks a little bit like uh, the way the Antikythera mechanism from ancient Greece works, which was, you know, almost 2,500 years ago, which is a lot lo longer ago. But the similarities between how they, the insides of them would look is, uh, it's eerie. But of course, we don't fully understand how the Antikythera mechanism works. What do you mean classified? What I'm asking is why would a maths professor have his military records classified? So we're jumping back and forth here. Okay. So something bad happened later in the 50s. Pardon me. I'd like to see some documents, if I may. Turing. Alan. Nice dodge. Hugh Alexander has denied my requisition for parts and, and, and equipment that I need to build the machine I've designed. Your fellow codebreakers are refusing to work with you. Fine, my response is they're all idiots. Fire them and use the savings to fund my machine. I only need about a hundred thousand pounds. <laughs> Man, he's bold. It's highly technical. You wouldn't understand. I suggest you make the effort to try. That was Tywin right there. It's bad manners to refuse a lord's offer. What if only a machine can defeat another machine? Hugh Alexander is in charge of your unit. He said no, and that is that. Have you ever won a war, Turing? Do you know how it's done? Order, discipline, chain of command. And you will do as your commanding officer instructs. Getting Tywin vibes from him in this movie. You will do as I command. Not another word. Winston Churchill, number 10 Downing Street, London, SW1. And you can take it up with him. I wouldn't want to catch Winston Churchill on a bad day. I, I, are you going to London? Possibly. Would you deliver a letter for me? Churchill's put Alan in charge. So the letter worked. Excellent. Keith and Charles are both fired. You can't just fire Keith and Charles. Well, he just said I could. No, I did no such thing. But Churchill did. We all gotta listen to Churchill. Go to hell. Oh! Well, I'm pretty sure what he did end up working, so... Hopefully you got over it. Popular at school, were you? The problem began, of course, with the carrots. Oh, now we're going further back. <laughs> I hate bullies, man. <laughs> oh, that's so fucked up! 
humans find violence deeply satisfying. Fuck these guys. I said it before in other reaction videos, everyone needs at least one ass whooping in their life. It goes a long way to building character and it humbles you. Don't be such a clike about it. And they just leave him there. I had help. Christopher. <laughs> Alan, are you all right? Thank you, Christopher. It's not my fault. They only beat me up because I'm smarter than they are. No, they beat you up because you're different. You know, Alan, sometimes it's the very people who no one imagines anything of who do the things no one can imagine. So what do we do now? Short on staff. We get more staff. And how do you propose to do that? He's going to see who can solve his uh, crossword puzzles. I haven't done a crossword puzzle in a long time. Oh. God, I can't even imagine what that's like. Mm. Tough, tough people, the citizens of London. I actually think it's good to, for a film to show the damage that's done that was done in London from those bombing runs. Because when we think of World War II, we think of us bombing German cities or Japanese cities. You know, it's at least here in the states because we, to our fault, we tend to overlook uh, the contributions that the British made in those wars. Um, cause we like to think of the war as, you know, 41 to 45, where you guys were fighting for two years prior to that. And you think they're qualified for Bletchley because they're good at crossword puzzles? Well, they say they're good and now we shall find out, won't we? Gentlemen, you have six minutes in which to complete the puzzle, at which point I will... There she is. You're not allowed in here, Mum. Oh, but I'm only a few minutes late and... The secretary's is to head upstairs. Is it because she's a woman? Yes, those secretaries are to head upstairs. It did say that it was top secret. What is going on? I, I solved a, a crossword puzzle in the newspaper and, and I, I got this letter saying that I was a candidate. My name's Joan Clark. Did you really solve this puzzle yourself? Oh, fuck off, dude. I, I'm really very Mom, good at... Mum, I'll have to ask you to... Miss Clark, I, I find tardiness under any circumstance um, unacceptable. Take a seat so that we may continue. Thank you. Mr. Turing wants to find the best ones. The lone woman in a room full of men who are all looking down upon her. And she's going to be the one that fucking wins. You go, girl! You know it's going to be her, though. Six minutes. Is that even possible? Uh, no. It takes me eight. <laughs> Problem. Do you tackle the whole thing at once or divide it? She done? You finished? Yes. She was late and early. Yes. Like, check it out, read it over. Five minutes and 34 seconds. You said to do it in under six. Congratulations. My warmest welcome to His Majesty's service. She's the best around. Nothing's gonna ever keep her down. Sorry. If you speak a word of what I'm about to show you, you will be executed for high treason. Oh. And. What is it that we're really doing? We're going to break an unbreakable Nazi code and win the war. What's that you're reading? It's about cryptography. Messages that anyone can see, but no one knows what they mean, unless you have the key. How's that different from talking? Talking? When people talk to each other, they never say what they mean. They say something else. That's very true. Alan, I have a funny feeling you're going to be very good at this. So do I. I can only dream of being that intelligent. Good night, Alan. This place looks like Hogwarts too. Maybe they maybe they use some of the same filming locations. Yeah, A new minions arrived. Jack, good. We Where's Miss Clark? <laughs> Lovely, isn't he? She never showed up. So that sounds like he's in her house. Spectrum of uh, uh, radio factories. This this one is is particularly. Why are you not at Bletchley? Gather your things and let's go. I'm sorry, but I'm unable to accept your offer. You belong at Bletchley. To work in a radio factory so far from home, it would be indecorous. What in the world does that even mean? I hope he talks her into doing it by appealing to 
duty and patriotism and, you know, everyone's life depends on it. We have a group of uh, young ladies who tend to all of our clerical tasks, assistants, translators. Uh, they live together in town. W w would that be a more uh, suitable environment? I would be working amongst these women. Yes. We won't have proper security clearance, of course, so uh, we'll have to improvise. Why are you helping me? There is only one thing that matters in this entire world right now. Do you understand? Sometimes it's the very people who no one imagines anything of who do the things that no one can imagine. Back to the 50s. Alan Turing's classified military file. Bloody empty. Exactly. Because it's top secret. Alan Turing's war records aren't just classified, they're non-existent. Guy Burgess and Donald McLean. The spies from the papers? The Soviet spies. But first they were professors. Then they joined the Communist Party, then Foreign Office, then leaked information to Stalin during the war. You think this Alan Turing might be a Soviet agent? Something very serious is happening right here under our noses. Wouldn't you like to find out what it is? Back to the 40s, or 39, 40, 1940, 39, whichever year it is. Some people thought we were at war with the Germans. Incorrect. We were at war with the clock. Britain was literally starving to death. The Americans sent over 100,000 tons of food every week. Every week the Germans would send our desperately needed bread to the bottom of the ocean. Yes. It's funny, uh, well, it's not funny, but, uh, United States. We were actually heavily involved in the war from the time it started. Just not directly involved. But we did basically everything else we could to support uh, Britain and then the, so the Soviet Union and um, anybody else we could help without sending our forces in. What just happened? Midnight. All the work we've done today is useless. Four hours rewiring his plug board matrix. Three hours yesterday on rotor positions. This machine. Uh oh. Are you talking about this bloody machine? Don't, you, don't, you, don't. you could help us. You could make this go faster, but you won't. My machine will work. Why is he keeping these guys around if he's doing it a whole different way than they are? Okay. Like he smuggled a couple papers out. <laughs> Is he going up there for business or pleasure? What did you bring me? These are actual decrypted Enigma messages direct from Nazi High Command. The relationship between the encrypted and decrypted messages that interests me. Who's Christopher? Oh, he's, uh, he's my machine. You named him? Is that a bad name? Named it after his friend. I read your paper at university. <laughs> it didn't just do one thing, it did everything. That your idea behind Christopher. What's happening? No, 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 don't! What are you doing? What, what's going on? There is a spy in Bletchley Park. The Navy thinks that one of us is a Soviet double agent, Al. Our boys intercepted this on its way to Moscow. Look familiar. You, d you don't seriously think I did this? Double agents are such bastards. He might be in trouble. Nothing out of the ordinary, sir. The Home Office may be protecting you now, but sooner or later, you will make a mistake. And I needn't bother firing you. They will hang you for treason. Ooh, boy. You sure this isn't Tywin Lannister? I heard about what happened. I have an idea of what might cheer you up. Alan? Uh, Hugh, hello. Come and join us for a drink. We'll be there in a moment. Miss Clark. Horny bastard. Really likes you. Alan, it doesn't matter how smart you are. Enigma is always smarter. If you really want to solve your puzzle, then you're going to need all the help you can get. They are not going to help you if they do not like you. That's true. Oh, he's bribing them. With apples. Brilliant. Said that it would be <clears throat> nice if I was to um, bring you all something. Thank you. I like apples. I'll be with Christopher if anyone needs me. Is a rational number. Back to the 30s. Or was it the 20s? Where A and B are whole numbers. Turing passing notes, are we? No, sir. Only Turing would pass notes written in gibberish. Joke's on you, Mr. Teacher. Oh, so they're very close friends. Is this leading to a love story? I, I'm sensing a love story a little bit. 
Back to the 40s. Look at this. If you run the wires across the plug ball matrix diagonally, it will eliminate rotor positions 500 times faster. Actually, not an entirely uh, terrible idea. He's trying. Uh, uh, that's my sandwich. You don't like sandwiches. <laughs> yeah, it's true. I'm really enjoying this movie right now. Whoever, uh, I can't remember who recommended that I watch it. Um, I told him I've seen a little bit of it, but uh, whoever you are, thank you so much for re-recommending this to us. Wow, look at that. A computer the size of a planet. Looks like it's working, but we'll see. Oh no, a tiger tank. This must be the Eastern Front. The Nazi flag now flies from more than two dozen national capitals. I feel you, man. That's how I feel on a day when I do like four or five reactions. Gears keep spinning on and on. With no result in sight. Hearing. Stay after him again. Lock out the government. I come the door or we'll break it up. I can't let you in. Go on then. Uh oh. Turn that thing off. No, no, no! It seems that your great big expensive machine doesn't work. It does. So you've broken Enigma then? S still working. See, a hundred thousand pounds is rather a lot of money. He's here to see what you have to show for it. Have you decrypted any German messages? Can you point to anything at all that you've achieved? Oh, your funding is up. It's with such great pleasure that I am finally able to say this. Alan Turing. Yes! You're fired. Please escort Mr. Turing from the premises. No. Are oh, they sticking up for him now, huh? If you fire Alan, well, then you'll have to fire me, too. Trust me when I tell you there is no one who would rather say this less than I do. Alan is right. His machine can work, and it's probably the best chance that we've got. If you fire them, you'll have to fire me, too. And me. I am Spartacus. Commander, at least give us some more time. One month. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, and Alan, your machine, it better bloody work. <laughs> I have a feeling it will. I'm not a spy. Oh, for God's sake, of course I'm not a bloody spy. I tilled into a pub last night. Back to the 50s. He's a poofter. He confessed. Poofter. Turing's one of the men that paid. Only Mr. Murray here then has the bright idea of robbing Turing's house after. That's what Turing's hiding. Well, he's a puff, not a spy. Mm. It's bloody rubbish. Turing's up to something important. He's, he's committed a crime and he's broken the law. Jesus Christ, it's bloody disgusting. <laughs> to each their own. Let me interrogate him. Now, will someone get me a warrant for the arrest of Alan Turing? For hooking up with a dude that was a crime back then? I know it was a lot worse for homosexuals back then, but... A crime? That seems very extreme. Although we're so far removed from that, that it just seems preposterous now. I'm 25, I'm unmarried, I'm living alone, and they want me home. Ridiculous. My parents. You can't leave, I, I won't let you. What am I supposed to do, Alan? You have an opportunity here to make some actual use of your life. And end up like you, no thanks. Ooh! Can you decipher that, you fragile narcissist? Or would you like me to go and fetch your precious Christopher to help? Oh, ho, ho, ho. she's cutting deep. I'm sorry. Yeah, you were cutting a little deep there. I like you. I like talking to you. I like talking to you too, Alan. What if you had a husband? I think you have one in mind. I do. Let's talk about himself. Oh my god. Yeah. This is ridiculous. This is your parents. I, I, I can't believe that this is happening. Is your middle name Carol or Catherine? Elizabeth. <laughs> Will you marry me? Oh, they did it. But he's gay. I'm sure he's just doing this to keep her around. Not, well, because they are friends, but also because he needs her for this cracking the Enigma machine. And she looked up at me with her doe eyes and said, am I supposed to put that in my mouth? And I said, yes, the French way. <laughs> Clamps her lips around it and starts humming the bloody Marseillaise. <laughs> the French way. I've, I've seen people say that in uh, movies before about that particular act. It's usually when it's uh, 
timepiece period between, like, you know, the 1920s and 1950s. What if I don't fancy being with Joan in, in that way? Because you're a homosexual. I suspect it. Should, should I tell her that I've had affairs with men? Perhaps not spreading this information about might be in your best interest. About. You can't tell anyone, Alan. It's illegal. And Denison is looking for any excuse he can to put you away. This has to stay a secret. That's wild that it was illegal. Having relations with the same sex is illegal. That's... That's wild. Back to the 30s. Or 20s. It's not a sport. Oh, he's not there. I hope something bad did happen to him. Back to the 40s or 50s. Mr. Turing, can I tell you a secret? I'm quite good with those. I'm here to help you. Oh, clearly. Can machines think? Oh, so you've read some of my published works. Could machines ever think as human beings do? Most people say not. You're not most people. A machine is different from a person, hence they think differently. The interesting question is, just because something uh, thinks differently from you, does that mean it's not thinking? You like strawberries, I hate ice skating. You cry at sad films, I am allergic to pollen. What is the point of, of, of different tastes, different preferences, if not to say that our brains work differently, that we think differently? And if we could say that about one another, then why can't we say the same thing for brains built of copper and wire? And that's this big paper you wrote. What's it called? The Imitation Game. That's what this reaction's about. Would you like to play? It's a game for determining whether something is... Uh, a machine or a human being. How do I play? The judge asks questions and, depending on the subject's answers, determines who he is talking with, what he is talking with. All you have to do is ask me a question. What did you do during the war? I worked in a radio factory. What did you really do during the war? Are you paying attention? The machine's back on. That's it then, is it? Yeah, the machine's never going to be able to process 159 million, million, million possibilities in time. Hopeless. If we knew what the messages were going to say, we wouldn't have to decrypt them at all. Who's Alan's friend? He's a bit of a cad, actually. So my type, then. A horny man and a horny woman. What could possibly go wrong? Who's that with Joan? Yeah, Helen. She wants me to come over. How on earth can you know that? She smiled at me a while back, and she hasn't looked again since. <laughs> Bingo. She's in. Alan, introduce us. Half a crown says Alan bollocks is this up entirely. Alan Turing has a theory. He has many. He believes that the regulations against men and women working side by side are sound because such proximity will necessarily lead to romance. Uh, what? No, I don't. I... How? <laughs> I'm sorry, have we met? I don't recall, but let's assume we have. So who do you agree with, Alan or myself? Alan, of course. I, I'm very flattered, really, but I, I don't think... <laughs> she kicked him this time. <laughs> How, how do you mean you work alongside a German? Well, each of us intercepts messages from a specific German radio tower. So we have a counterpart on the other side who tip tapping out the messages. I feel as if I know him so well. It's a pity he has a girlfriend, but that's why I disagree with you, Mr. Alexander. Excellent. <laughs> and good slow gym. Helen! <laughs> Yes, Alan? Why do you think your German counterpart has a girlfriend? Well, each of his messages begins with the same five letters. C-I-L-L-Y. Love will make a man do strange things, I suppose. In this case, love just lost Germany the whole bloody war. <laughs> Don't worry about it, he's figured it out. And you're off to win the war. Alan! Oh, he running. What if? What if Christopher doesn't have to search through all of the settings? He only has to search through ones that produce words we already know will be in the message. Oh, 600 hours, weather today is clear, rain in the evening, Heil Hitler. They send a weather report every day at 6 a.m. Three words we, we know will be in every 6 a.m. message. Weather, obviously, and Heil bloody Hitler. Heil bloody Hitler. The, uh, the, uh, the right-hand letter, we'll set them to... Yes, uh, I know, I know. Weather and Hitler. That must be there. H. W. A. Done. What's gonna happen? Oh my god. It did it. What happened? Did it work? <laughs> we all have to follow him. The latest intercept. 
M. M. Y. Y. M. M. T. T. R. I. Okay, Miss Jaguar, East Alf Punkt is directed to 53 degrees 24 minutes north and Alf Punkt 1 degree west. It worked. <laughs> yes! <laughs> it almost makes me want to shed a tear. Because <clears throat> this was a major, major deal. <laughs> Alan and Hugh getting along. It's good to see. Oh, he gets a hug. Look at that. Benedict Cumberbatch is such a good actor, too. I'm. This is a great performance, yet again. O. O. T. T. A. A. U. U. You just defeated Nazism with a crossword puzzle. There's going to be an attack on a British passenger convoy. Right there. Oh God, you're right. Well, those U-boats are only 20, 30 minutes away. Millions, and we can save their lives. Do you think there's enough time to save them? No, it's urgent. No. What the hell are you, you doing? You, you can't call, Dennis. What are you talking about? We can have air support over that convoy in 10 minutes. Let the U-boat sink the convoy. Look, it's been a big day. Maybe you're suffering from no, a bit of shock. You don't or... have time for... No! Oh! oh! Yes, no, I, I, fine, fine. There's got to be a reason for him not wanting him to do it. Sometimes we can't do what feels good. You have to do what is logical. Oh, God. What? Oh, damn it, Alan's right. What? What would the Germans think if we destroy their U-boats? Nothing. They'll be dead. No. Oh, I know where this is going, yeah. Our convoy suddenly veers off course. A squadron of RAF bombers miraculously descends on the coordinates of the U-boats. What will the Germans think? The code's been broken. The Germans will know that we have broken Enigma. Yes. And they'll have changed the design of Enigma by the weekend. Everything that we've done here will all be for nothing. Wow, he's right. Our job is not to save one passenger convoy, it is to win the war. Carlyle. What? The HMS Carlyle is one of the ships. We can't act on every piece of intelligence, just this one. Peter, what's the matter with you? Oh, does he have a relative on there? My, my brother's is on the Carlyle. Oh, no. The gunnery ensign. I'm so sorry. Who do you think you are? My brother. He's my big brother, all right, and you have a few minutes to call off his murder. We can't. <sighs> mm. Alan, John, but... Uh, please, I... I'm asking you, as your friend, please. I'm so sorry. Mm. And you don't get to decide who lives and who dies. Yes, we do. You said we. Because no one else can. That's insane. You have to let certain things happen, and then when a big thing happens, I guess you... <clears throat> that's when you start striking at uh, the places they're coordinating. That's crazy. Man, that is a mind fuck right there. Unbelievable. It would suck to have to make those decisions. Oh my lord. That scene got me, man. Oh, I feel so bad for that guy. Now, I don't know if that particular incident, I don't know what that character's name is, or uh, who he's based on, or if that really did happen in the room. I mean, I, it could, could have happened, could, it could not, but... Either that's true, or that was put in there to, sh to really stress how, for lack of a better term, fucked up the uh, decision-making had to be in, in that situation. But, uh, wow, that was a really powerful scene. That's going to stick with me for quite some time. Why are you telling me this? We need your help to keep this a secret. Uh, uh, no one can know we broke Enigma. Not even Dennis was in the process of having you fired. You can take care of that. While we develop a system to help you determine how much intelligence to act on. The minimal number of actions it will take for us to win the war, but the maximum number we can take before the Germans get suspicious. MI6 can come up with the lies that we tell everybody else. Maintain a conspiracy of lies at the highest levels of government. Sounds right up my alley. <laughs> yeah, you're the head of MI6. I so rarely have cause to say this, but you are exactly the man I always hoped you would be. Well, Alan got some praise. Ugh. The things that people had to sacrifice back then. And it wasn't just limbs. 
Peter, do you have the uh, the the six thirty decrypt? What is he mad at him again? Seven, seven. That was the key. Peter will come around eventually. What's going on? Could you give Alan and me a moment, please? The Soviets and us were on the same side. What I'm doing will help. Oh, it was him. Because if you tell him my secret, I'll tell him yours. Oh no. Fuck. We'll never be able to work again. Never be able to teach. Fuck you. Take one of the coils out of the machine and just stab him in the face with it at that point. Remember, don't take me seriously. I'm just talking shit. Some advice about keeping secrets. It's a lot easier if you don't know them in the first place. That's a good quote. Joe, yeah. what's... Where's Joan? Military prison. What have you done? Decoded Enigma intercepts. I found a pile of them in the bedside table. No, no. I, I gave those to her over a year ago. Denison's been looking for a Soviet spy. I know who the spy is. Cairn Cross. I, f I found the Beale cipher, the Bible. God, I wish you'd been the spy. Mm. You'd be so much better at this than he is. You knew it was him. Of course I bloody knew. Why do you think I had him placed here? You you placed a Soviet agent at Bletchley Park. Really quite useful to be able to leak whatever we want to Stalin. Churchill's too damn paranoid. He won't share a shred of intelligence with the Soviets. Not even information that will help them against the Germans. So much secrecy. <sighs> I want to know what to leak to John. What to feed to the Soviets as well as the British. I'm just a mathematician. I know a lot of spies, Alan. You've got more secrets than the best of them. Wow, so he's like in a never-ending game now. Yes, Joan's at the market. She's going to be back in an hour. I lied. We're going to have such a wonderful war together. Mark Strong. Mark Strong is a really good actor, too. I love him. One of the films I love him most in was, uh, what's that Ridley Scott film? Um... Body of Lies. He was terrific in that. You need to get very far away from me. And what's happened? I can't be engaged anymore. What's wrong with you? I have something uh, uh, to tell you. I'm a homosexual. All right. Not women. So what? I had my suspicions. I always did. But we're not like other people. We love each other in our own way, and we can have the life together that we want. Wow. That sounds like a better marriage than most. No physical intimacy, though. I don't think I could do that. And we understand one another more than, more than anyone else ever has. I don't what? care for you. I never did. I, I just needed you to break Enigma. Oh. So you can go. Yeah. I'm not going anywhere. Oh, man. I've spent entirely too much of my life worried about what you think of me. This is the most important work I will ever do. And no one is going to stop me. Least of all you. You really are a monster. Oh, man. I hate seeing this because they're like best friends. Ugh. She, every word she said was right, and then she had to throw the monster in there. And I think he's doing it just to protect her, because he knows too much. Every day we decided who lived and who died. Every day we helped the Allies to victories, and nobody knew. Stalingrad, the Ardennes, the invasion of Normandy. All victories that would not have been possible without the intelligence that we supplied. Your victory of the cause of freedom. My boy, love me some Winston. This is a solemn. Sir Winston. What happens now? But you've one thing left to do before your service to your government is concluded. Burn everything. You were told when you started this was a top secret program. But the war is over. This war is, but there'll be others. And we know how to break a code that everybody else believes is unbreakable. Tear it down, light it up. None of you have ever met before. None of you have ever even heard the word enigma. With a bit of luck, you'll never have to see me or one another again for the rest of your lives. And he ends it with a threat. MI6, don't fuck around. Somebody will. Now you get to judge. So tell me, what am I? Machine? Am I a person? Am I a war hero? Am I a criminal? I can't judge you. You're no help to me at all. Mm. Tortured soul. You wanted to see me, sir. Touring. Sit down. Something the matter. You and Christopher Morecambe are quite close. He caught you passing notes the other day. You and your friends solved maths problems during maths class because the maths class is too dull. He's not my friend. Well, I'm told he's your only friend. Something's come up. Why am I here? Christopher is dead. <sighs> His mother sent word this morning. 
The family were on holiday. I don't understand. Well, he had bovine tuberculosis, as I'm sure he told you. I'm sorry. You're mistaken. Did he not tell you? And well, he's been sick for a long time. But he had a stiff upper lip about it. Are you all right, George? Yes. May I leave, Headmaster? Why is there a part of me that thinks he was lying about that? I don't I don't know. Like just to get him to a different place because they knew what was going on between them. I don't know. But that's so fucking sad. Uh oh. And this guy doesn't know what to do now. I would have testified. What would you have said that I, uh, I wasn't a homosexual? This is serious. They could send you to jail. Oh. Your hands, you're twitching. What's going on with him? It's the medication. The medication? Uh, well, the judge gave me um, a choice. Uh, uh, either two years in prison or hormonal therapy. Ugh. Chemical castration. Oh my god. That's the dumbest punishment ever because... Oh, why would you chemically castrate someone who's obviously never going to have children? I don't understand that. Maybe somebody can explain that to me, but... just, uh, just It all seems like barbarism to me. Now, I, I'm going to speak to your doctors. I'm going to speak to your lawyers. No, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. I don't need your help, thank, thank you. Yes, you do. Alan, you do not have to do this alone. Alone? Never have been. He's obsessed with this machine now. Christopher's become so smart. Mm. You can't let them leave me alone. I don't, I don't want to be alone. I don't want to be alone. It's all right. Come sit down. I'm happy she's there with him. Much nicer ring than the one I, I made you. <laughs> His name's Jock. An army man, if you can believe it. Why don't we do a crossword puzzle? He can't do it anymore. Perhaps later. Those hormones are killing his mind. God, that makes me so angry. Do you know, this morning, I was on a train that went through a city that wouldn't exist if it wasn't for you. I bought a ticket from a man who would likely be dead if it wasn't for you. I read up on my work a whole field of scientific inquiry that only exists because of you. Now, if you wish you could have been normal, I can promise you I do not. Beautiful. Do you really think that? I didn't realize Alan Turing's story was so tragic. Alan Turing committed suicide. Oh my God. 41. Mm. It took until 2013? My lord. It shaved the, uh, it cut the war down by two years. And it remained a government held secret for more than 50 years. Turing machines, the Turing test, I know that. Which is what the dialogue between him and the, uh, today we call them computers. It's what the dialogue between him and the, uh, Manchester policeman was about. Amazing. God, I wish I'd watched that from beginning to end a long time ago. I, it was kind of in the middle part of the story that I saw all that time ago. But, uh, now that I've seen the full thing from beginning to end for the first time. That was an incredible film. Uh, I didn't realize it was going to be that sad. I didn't know that much about Alan Turing. I just, you know, I know he was part of breaking the uh, Enigma machine and um, heard of the Turing test just in terms of you're a person or AI. Uh, wow. I didn't know he was a homosexual. I didn't know he committed suicide and I didn't know he was under that barbaric punishment. That's just fucking horrifying. Um, and I didn't know homosexuality was a crime in the UK at that stage. Um, 
Wow. But the, uh, one of the things I, th I like about this film that it highlights is not all of the hard work is done, but although it's, I think it's equally as important. Not all the hard work is done by the, uh, the men in the trenches and in the dirt, men and women. But, uh, those behind the scenes that are working to help those on the front lines uh, do their job to the best of their ability. So this was an excellent, excellent film. The acting was tremendous. I've seen Benedict Cumberbatch in quite a lot of films. That was uh, one of his finest performances. When he was crying at the end, I almost cried. And uh, Kira Knightley. I haven't seen her in many things. Um, but of the things I have seen her in, this is, I think, by far her best performance, in my opinion. So it's always nice to see Charles Dance. Mark Strong, I, when you got uh, Charles Dance and Mark Strong in the film, tremendous actors. Um, the guy that played uh, Hugh was very good, too. I've seen him in a couple other things, too. Uh, not not many. I think he was in um, Watchmen, and I saw him in a couple episodes of The Crown. Um, he's a good actor, too. It was, it was a great movie. Um, and the, uh, the fact that, you know, once they crack the Enigma machine, they can't just reverse everything. You know, like, oh, we know this uh, German U-boat's going here to sink this ship. Like, you know, otherwise it would have given the secret away. Uh, the, the, oh, it's got to be heart-wrenching to make those kind of decisions, knowing that you're, you're basically allowing um, certain people to die so you can save more. But, you know, you got to pick and choose. It's like that, you know, basically almost playing God in a way. And there was um, a lot of theological questions in this film. So this, I'm going to be thinking about this film for quite some time. It was, it was excellent. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the reaction. And uh, that whole generation, whether you're British American, Russian, or any other, any French, any of the other countries that um, fought against the Nazis, the Italian fascists, um, basically I should say Hitler, Mussolini, and, and uh, the Imperial Japanese Empire. Um, they sacrificed so much so we could be here today doing ridiculous things like reaction videos. You know, so we have a lot to thank them for. So if you got a relative who's still alive that contributed to, uh, you know, the war effort. I have actually haven't got it on, but, uh, you know, thinking of my grandfather, when I, I usually wear his dog tag in my videos, but if you, and he's not with us anymore, but if you have a relative who um, was a part of that, tell him thank you for me. Wow. Tremendous movie. I'm getting teared up again almost. My eyes are getting watery, so I better go. All right. Whoa. Okay. Well, uh, Boomer writes, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you learned something. And um, But, again, I highly recommend you watch this film on your own because it is a reaction um, viewing. It's more for the purpose of people who have already seen the film. But, uh, anyway... I'll check you guys next time, and uh, stay safe out there, okay? All right, I'll see you next time, Boomerites.